I want to touch on the Randall cycle briefly before we get to serotonin because some um, some advocates in the keto community, it's so funny, Georgie, you know, you, you, I do carnivore and uh, I love that people benefit from that, but I think it's kind of the same thing as keto. You benefit a short, short term and probably benefit because you're getting rid of starches and cleaning up the quality of your diet and maybe getting more organs, which I think are hugely important. Yep. I want to talk about yep. organs in this podcast as well. Yep. But then the people, when you, when you go out of that community, people in the community just want to attack you. It's not okay to, it's not okay to change your mind or to learn yeah. or to, yeah. so there's people in the strict carnivore community who look at my diet and say, Randall cycle, Saladino is eating sugar with fat because I'm eating whole milk. And you know, my diet is basically whole milk, honey, maple syrup, cheese, meat, organs like liver and heart or desiccated organs and fruit. Uh, that's basically my diet. And so the keto community looks at that and says, Randall cycle, we got him. He's eating fat in the meat, you know, or fat in butter occasionally or fat in the whole milk. And, and he's, um, and he's eating sugar. So he's basically storing all that fat or metabolizing all that glucose to fat. And, and I guess they're sort of ignoring the fact that I have like 10% body fat. <laughs> like, I don't know where all this fat is going. <laughs> like, I don't know how I'm so broken from a Randall cycle perspective that I have like 10% body fat, but can you just speak to that a little bit? We've kind of touched on that a little bit by yeah. saying lipolysis, Will will change the way your body metabolizes glucose, but is this is this the reason that you think having some kind of balanced macros is a good idea? Like, um, or you know, I just want to talk about this a little bit so people understand the perspective. So, a couple of this first the accusation against you that like eating whole milk will, will somehow get you fat because of the render cycle. They're misguided because if you look at the label, whole fat milk I think has like what five grams of fat per serving, but it, yeah. it has like twenty to twenty five gram, grams of lactose. So you're actually eating mostly a high carb food uh, and a decent amount of protein as well. Uh, it's the, the carbs are the highest macronutrients in milk, um, even in the in, in the in the in the in the whole milk. Um, so, but uh, let's let's talk about meat. Most of the meat, if you're eating like red meat, like the lean meats and whatnot, they're actually not that high on fat, uh, and a lot of the fat in them is actually short chain fatty acids, which are not subject to the Randall cycle because they mm. basically they get they get metab they get transport transported into the cells through a non L carnitine dependent mechanism. They metabolize similarly to sugar, and they don't seem to be triggering the same sort of like a, a Randall cycle effect. Now, what drives the Randall cycle effect? When you oxidize in primarily fats, the, this, uh, what I call the master conductor uh, redox modulator, which is the NAD to the NADH ratio, specifically the in, intramitochondrial one, uh, drops. And basically the NAD to the NADH ratio, which kind of signals how oxidized versus how reduced you are, right, metabolically, um, that ratio basically turns out to be the primary a regulator of whether pyruvate dehydrogenase will accept pyruvate and convert it into acetyl-CoA and, and then continue with the Krebs cycle in the electron transport chain or not. In other words, high ratio of NAD to the NADH when you're very, very oxidized will favors the activity of pyruvate dehydrogenase. So you will not be accumulating pyruvate. You will not be generating lactate. But if you're eating a lot of fat, the NAD to the NADH ratio drops and then the buildup starts to happen. And then basically pyruvate accumulates, lactate accumulates, and then the Krebs cycle is basically, I mean, Krebs cycle is working because it's accepting acetyl-CoA from the beta oxidation, right? Because the right. that's how the fat acids get oxidized. But the, the glucose that you're eating, it cannot get metabolized for that reason. Um, and and basically, uh, that's really the gist of the, of the oh, the other thing is uh, uh, when, you, when you're eating a lot of fats, you're also consuming a lot of the FAD, which is the flavonine, adenine, uh, flavin adenine dinucleotide, which is a uh, derivative of vitamin B2. Uh, and without a sufficient amount of FAD, in other words, the FAD to the FADH, F is in frank, ratio also drops when you're eating a lot of fat. And the FAD to the FADH ratio is the primary determinant of how well electron transport chain complex 2 will work. And if you're blocking, if a lower ratio there blocks the electron transport chain, if the lower FAD to the FADH blocks ETC2, and a lower NAD to the NADH blocks the pyruvate dehydrogenase, there's really two steps, two key steps where you're blocking the metabolism of glucose because glucose has to pass through these steps ultimately to meet oxygen and become ATP and water and carbon dioxide. So that's really the gist of the Randall cycle. When you're, when you're providing too much of this one micronutrient, and by the way, the same thing is true of glucose. If you're providing a lot of glucose, in theory, you should be able to outcompete the free fatty acids, right? And then basically you should be uh, oxidizing more glucose versus less fat. But, you know, that all depends on how much glucose can get into the cell. Uh, and unfortunately, when you're eating these high-fat diets and when you have a higher lipolysis, the, the actual uptake of glucose into the cell is already, like, 
largely blocked through these GLUT receptors, which depend on insulin. Um, so, so free fatty acids not only block the metabolism of glucose, they also block the uptake of glucose into, into the cell. So they prevent the sort of like positive effects that glucose would have had in terms of competing with the free fatty acids because it also blocks their uptake as well. Um, so that's really the Randall cycle. Basically, too much fat blocks your both uptake and utilization of glucose. And whatever glucose is uptaken, you largely tend to convert it to a non-beneficial byproducts, such as lactic acid. And if it even gets into the Krebs cycle, uh, high, uh, high levels of NAD, I'm sorry, low levels of NAD to the NADH favor uh, this fatty acid synthase pathway from citrate, which basically glucose right. when it gets into the Krebs cycle. Right? So it's really, that's, that's really the gist of it. Fats make you fat directly. Fats make you not metabolize glucose, not uptake glucose. And if you even metabolize a little bit of it, they favor its conversion into fat versus its, you know, um, sort of like percolating through the electrotransport chain and becoming ATP, carbon dioxide, and water. If that was too technical for you guys, just listen to it back. That's an awesome summary. Thank you. Um, it's taken me a long time to wrap my head around a lot of that, even though I went to medical school and, you know, the biochemistry we learned in the Krebs cycle. But that that's that's really interesting. So 